Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a special unboxing video for you. If you guys have followed my channel for even like one video, you probably know that I really enjoy green on my knives. That's because it's particularly difficult to get a good green on titanium unless you really know what you're doing with anodizing. Now Craig Brown really knows what he's doing with anodizing because he achieved this green with flame anodizing. That is really, really difficult to do uh, to get that consistent green color. To be honest, I don't think I've seen many other people or anyone else achieve a green with flame anodizing. Usually people are using electro anodizing, so bathing this in a, in a bath and then electrically charging that fluid and it creates this green. It's difficult to get to that color. You have to have a powerful source and a reliable system to make it happen. This Koenig Knives Arius has a very, very nice green hardware and clip sit situation going on right here. Absolutely stunning piece right there. This knife right here, the Gavco Knives Shrunk Trasher, is really special because of the black tie mascus that's been electro-anodized green, and it just gives it this feeling that it's alive. In addition to that, Michael Gavick does this amazing milling pattern around here. This is done by hand, and uh, it just makes the knife seem like it's alive. It continues all the way down the spine of the knife, around the front and into the finger choil. It just makes the knife feel alive. And so when I saw this next knife on Instagram, I got that same sense and I knew that I had to have it. This is a box that may be familiar to a few of you who follow me. This is a Brian Nadeau uh, Sharp by Design box right here. A few months ago, I actually bought an iteration of this exact same knife, the Mini Typhoon, and that's what we're opening up here. That Mini Typhoon was bronze titanium with uh, acid washed handle. It was a beautiful knife. My buddy Nico at Today's Grail Tomorrow's Beater really wanted to buy it off me, and so I sold it to him to keep the channel moving, but I regretted selling that knife. So when I saw this one, I knew I had to have it. And here it is, my brand new Frunkified Brian Nadeau Mini Typhoon. I really like this box. I like the way that it comes in here, so thanks, Brian, for that. But take a look at this handle. So Brian posted this exact green scale snakeskin pattern on his uh, Instagram, and I was like, I must have this. And so I sent him uh, a message there and said, can I buy it? And he said, absolutely. And then we worked on this over the next few weeks. Uh, so this milling pattern is what sets it apart as different from the other mini typhoons, but I really enjoy the spec that I've chosen, and we'll get into those details here in just a minute. Why don't we go ahead and figure out what we're looking at here objectively. Up front is a three and a half inch blade of S90V steel. It's four inches back to the pivot and exactly eight inches overall. The handle length, uh, the, the handle length itself is right at four and a half inches and the grip area is at four and a quarter inches. I really appreciate the exact measurements and the balance that's going on in this knife. Speaking of balance, I'll bring out another favorite three and a half inch blade of mine, the uh, ZT0392. If I put these knives pivot to pivot, you can see the uh, efficiency of space that is achieved with the Mini Typhoon over here. A much bigger handle going on with the 0392. Speaking of a bigger handle and a smaller blade, here's a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 for a size comparison. You can see that it is smaller than that, uh, so it is a nice size for the amount of blade that you're getting. You're getting even more cutting length than a PM2 in a smaller overall package. Here is a large Chris Reeve Knives in Kosi, a pretty common knife that some people might have an understanding of. Uh, and you can see that the, uh, the Mini Typhoon is coming in in that size uh, area right there. One thing I really appreciate is that this is not really that mini. Here's a really mini knife right here. This is the uh, Curtis Knives ODT Flipper right here. I haven't brought this knife out in quite a while, but uh, I do love my green knives all the way from the big to the small, so I thought this should make an appearance on the video right there. But the mini is sort of deceiving because at three and a half inches, there's nothing really mini about this knife. It's probably too big for Nick Shabazz, but I really enjoy that size. It fits in my hand quite well, and I really like that. So let's break this knife down anatomically and see what we're working with. Up front is that hand-rubbed satin S90V blade. I have to give really big props to Brian for finishing this project. Uh, this S90V is incredibly hard stuff and very difficult to achieve a hand-rubbed satin on. 
particularly if you're having some back problems. So I'm pretty sure this knife almost killed Brian when he was trying to make it, but uh, I am very, very thankful to him for finishing that out. All the different faces of this knife are hand done. So the flats are hand rubbed, this primary bevel, the front bevel, the swedge up top, which is just beautiful, the top of the knife, that facet right there, Oh my gosh, it's just so well done. It's The hand rub is even and consistent and very nicely done. Even on the flipper tab, now I've got some finger oils on there, but even the flipper tab is hand rubs. And that's just so nice to see. Now he's got a very unique flipper tab right there, but it does function quite well. We'll talk about that in a second. The blade is a Japanese Tanto with the clip point option and the fuller option. Sorry, the, the satin finish messes with my camera sometimes. I really enjoy the fuller. It's not a functional thing in terms of flipping. I'm not, it hides in the handle so well that there's no way that's going to flip out. But I do like the aesthetic uh, that it adds to it. And it lightens the blade ever so slightly. I think it gives it a nice balance. So I really do like that. It looks great too. The uh, bead blasted finish on the inside there provides a nice contrast with all the satin finish. Very, very cool. Moving back to the pivot, this thing runs on ball bearings. It's got a really cool pivot screw. I actually got to select that one as well. I really, really like that. It runs very smoothly on these ball bearings, but the interesting thing about these knives is the detent system. So what you can see on the lock bar here is that there's a steel lock bar insert that Brian is known for. He mills these things out, and on the inside, if I can show it to you properly, let's see, there is a milled detent. So unlike most knives, that actually have a detent ball bearing that's like stuck into this uh, lock bar system. This one is actually milled into this lock bar insert and it provides a very accurate and very snappy detent. Uh, it is shaped in such a way that it can ramp onto and off of the blade in a very efficient way. And the detent is just great. It's crisp and it just flies out of the handle. And what it also provides is on closure, there is a smooth ramp onto the detent and then off of it. Whereas on the, in a lot of knives that use ball bearings, there's a bit of a second where uh, it has to jump over that ball bearing because it's a rather um, you know tall surface. This one ramps very nicely and very efficiently and I really enjoy that. That's a very unique feature here. Now, there is a bit of controversy out there right now. The folks over at Holt Blade Works just released their knife with the same sort of lock interface and detent ball, detent system milled into the lock bar insert, but I'm gonna let those guys settle it on their own. I do know that uh, Brian is the one who came up with that idea. Moving back to these glorious handles here, take a look at what he's calling his snakeskin pattern. He actually named this knife the Green Mamba, which I really like that name. It's so cool. Uh, to be honest, it reminds me more of a dragon than of a snake. That's kind of what I was seeing in this knife. It has a very sort of, in my opinion, almost a Japanese look to it, a Quiken look to it like that, it, because the blade really hides away in the handle like that, and it's got that squared shape. Now, uh, forgive me if that's not the intention of the knife, but with this Tanto shape and everything, I really get that vibe, and I want it to be more of a dragon look, and I, I just love it. I'm going to show you some really nice close-ups of this pattern. He's done these triangular diamond patterns in this stepped fashion. It's also contoured. It's absolutely amazing. I can't imagine the thought and the patterning and the calculations, who knows what that has to go into making something like this. You CNC guys may appreciate this a hundred times more than I do, but I know that this is a complex undertaking. And then to anodize it in this green pattern that really with these different uh, scales, it almost looks like a prism. So you get these bronzes and blues and certainly the greens, and it just looks alive. As you move it through the light, the colors just shift on the surface and it gives it this living feeling. This is his uh, proprietary clip that actually has no screws. It actually goes under the scale and is locked into place underneath the backspacer. Here this one is satin finished with this geared pattern. I am absolutely in love with this knife. If you want my opinion on this knife, I have an unboxing and a final diagnosis already published. I'm so thankful to get this back into my collection, particularly in this finish. I adore this knife and I cannot recommend his knives more highly. 
So thank you to Brian for selling me this mini typhoon. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Let me know what you think of the knife down below. And as always, take care.